Black Mountain College is a college in North Carolina that was created by John Rice in 1933. Um, it's set up as an alternative school in North Carolina, so it wasn't a traditional art school. It was very much about bending and changing the mind as you learn about art in different ways. Um, John Rice didn't know art, and he didn't know any artists, so he had to reach out to people until he reached out to Philip Johnson, who was in architecture, and introduced him to Joseph Alberts, who was um, a part of the Bauhaus that was closed down by the Nazis. So Joseph Albert Al Albers and his wife, Anna, Annie, came to North Carolina to help with the school. And this was a progressive educational experience, experimental college. Um, and they did a lot of, you know, incorporating art, not only as just being the artist, separating the artist from the audience, but having the artist also be the audience. So it incorporated art into our everyday lives and how it, um, how we view art here and now and not just in a performance or anything like that. Um, there's no distinction between art and life. Um, um, a woman, there were, the role of women in this college was very heavy. They had a very heavy role in the college, but they also weren't appreciated as much as men were. Women were often wives, and they were not paid, but they taught, not because um, they, because they wanted to, not because they were invited to, if that makes sense. Um, uh, some important people were Annie Alberts. She translated a lot of Joseph's um, classes and his artwork and all of that, she translated it, and she also taught basket weaving. Um, Karen Carnes was also a very important person. She was she did pottery, and a pottery was also not very respected in the college, but she um, kind of just, she did a lot of pottery, not only just like the practical pottery that was used in dining halls and stuff, but she did her own um, interpretive pottery. Um, one of the artists that I looked up was Robert Creeley, which he's one of the most influential American poets in the 20th century. He was born in Arlington, Massachusetts in 1926, and he, there's an accident happened when he was four, and he's, he was blind in one eye. Um, he attended Harvard, but he didn't, he didn't feel respected by his elders, and so he dropped out, I believe, and admitted to the service to serve American field, the American field service. Um, and then he got a master's at the University of North Me New Mexico. Uh, so he finished his education, and then he got in touch with... Um, Charles Olson, who was also another famous poet, and he went to, he was a part of the Black Mountain Poets. Um, he got married twice, and his second wife he met at, in Albuquerque because he taught a, a all-boys school in Ar Albuquerque. Um, and I looked at both of, two of his poems and the circle and song and they were very good um i liked song it was i liked the way that his poetry is more of a storytelling and not so much like metaphorical and so it's easy to understand uh, i picked um black mountain out of all four of those because i thought i read a book a while ago that talked about black mountain but i didn't know anything about it and so i decided to look it up and see what it was about and why it was created.
And I think it's really interesting how this progressive view of creativity and art wasn't just for the audience or the artist, but it was intertwined into our lives. Um, and so I, I did definitely enjoyed learning about Black Mountain Car College. Um, and in conclusion, I think that learning how to incorporate art into our lives can help our creative and imagination grow. And Black Mountain definitely shows that growth in today's society within art.